For this introductory chapter, we're going to have a look at a small checklist of crucial aspects that you need in place to be able to produce a professional website. If running through this, you feel you don't have the answers yet, don't panic because the idea of this particular chapter is that we can circle back to it at a later stage. At any point during the bullet point brief, wireframing, creating a site map or prioritization of our content, we can jump back onto this section because we might have better ideas and better answers for some of these questions. But I just wanted to plant the seed at this stage so you've got it in the back of your mind, the things that we need to consider when building a successful website. Let's crack on. First up, we're gonna have a look at what type of website we're building. We're gonna kick off with business card websites. Business card websites are essentially an online version of a business card. We often call them landing or holding pages for websites that are in construction, or in some rare cases, that's all our client wants. They just want an online presence which has their contact details and maybe a sentence about what they do. The downsides to business cards are the fact that you're unlikely to get very good traction with search engines, simply because there's not enough content for Google and other search engines to find and navigate to. On the flip side, they're very low cost and easy to assemble. Brochureware website kind of does what it says on the tin. It's an online brochure that allows you to showcase your services or products without the need of e-commerce. It also allows you to put your contact details, how your visitors can find you and other key aspects as well. It can delve into the culture of your business, explaining why you do what you do or your organization is successful in a specific field. I feel that brochureware websites are the second simplest type of website to create, second to the business card. We're going to move on to portfolio websites. This, like a brochureware website, can show product services or what you're able to deliver. This is very popular in the creative industries where, for example, graphic designers will create an online portfolio showing what they are able to deliver. Again, this stops short of selling online. Next up, we have shops, our online stores. They can vary from single product stores, so where you're selling one product online and you're trying to drive as much traffic to that product as you can. Professionals creating eBooks or online mini courses like this one could decide to go for a one product pitch. At the other end of the scale, you could have thousands or even tens of thousands of products in a large, potentially unruly online store. And if that's the case, then this course will only be the very first stepping stone to that result. You'll need a lot more industry experience or outside expertise to be able to manage a fully functioning large e-commerce website. Most of the clients that we deal with and the people taking this course are generally going to be looking at anything between one and probably a thousand products for their store. If you're in that category, read on because this course should help you. Next up, we have Newsstand. This could be an aggregated website where you're feeding in news stories from multiple websites, either via an RSS feed or by rewriting articles that are out there on the net and adding your own viewpoint. So journalists starting out could create a Newsstand website. Blogs also fit under this category. But the majority of blogs we work with now are actually much more than a blog. The combination between blogs and brochureware, newsstand blogs all fit into this particular category of website. Next up, we have our e-learning platforms. There has been a huge uptake in the last few years, especially since COVID. Examples of online course websites include Udemy, LinkedIn Learning, Masterclass, right down to those starting up teaching from home, building their environment and their setup as they go. You can build online learning platforms on a lot of website builders. The larger your platform becomes, you may then start to look at more specialist solutions. The likes of Kajabi, Mighty Networks, and there's a range of others, even the free open source Moodle, which is used by a lot of universities. Next up, we have our online communities. I've already mentioned Mighty Networks. Mighty Networks is where I would start to look at for that type of solution. When you look for these out of the box community or even e-learning platforms, you might find that the design aspects are more constrained. So whilst the rest of this course is really worthwhile looking at, you might find that certain aspects won't apply to your requirements. Finally, we're going to look at magazine style websites here. We're merging portfolio and blog together. So we're going for a very glossy magazine style look and feel with the news aspect that's regularly popping up. Okay, let's run through a few different questions. Is your website going to be predominantly lead generation or lead conversion? Are you planting the seed or answering the call? This is really important to know 
because if you say yes both fine but what weighting is the priority of each if you're looking at lead generation predominantly you'll need to start gearing up either the amount of time that you put into your website to maintain it or the cost of hiring someone to keep your website active and also participating at the top end of Google. This isn't a Google SEO course. We have one in the pipeline, but we need to be thinking about, is it feasible for us to create a lead generation website? It's in a more competitive environment. What you'll find is it can be very slow to generate leads, especially in the first six to 12 months of a website. If you're relying on that, you need to spend a huge amount of time planning lead conversion you could be relying on word of mouth online forums interest groups to draw people to your website first before google starts doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you it's certainly achievable to create a lead generation website but we are often in our industry managing expectations and that's one thing i would say is it won't happen overnight what's more important website load speed or the visual impact that our website provides high fidelity strong images or video content if that's more important then it's going to impact your load speed think of a weighing scales the more we put pressure on one plate the more it affects the other one as it moves we need to make sure that we're applying the right pressure in the right percentage ratio the longer a web page takes to load it's more likely that you're going to lose some visitors along the way but if the visual impact of your website is most important the right type of visitor to your website will appreciate that the best things are worth waiting for. It's also worth thinking about what your own involvement is going to look like. Are you a marketing manager who's been thrust into the role of orchestrating a brief process for a new website? So you're sending out the tenders, you are going to be interviewing potential suppliers. If so, this course is really handy to give you a little bit more insight in terms of what agencies think. So you can hold them to account, but also be part of that conversation. If you're a sole trader or a designer and you are thrust into the role of having to create a website because you don't have the budget to hire someone else, then again, there are other aspects of this course that will take you through it step by step. How to prep and plan for a professional website without any prior experience. This course is built up on 20 years worth of experience that I've had in the industry. So you are avoiding, hopefully, many of the mistakes that I've made in the industry over the 20 years I've been involved. Next up, we're gonna look at what's most important and how are we going to measure the website. Say for example, you were to sit down and review your new website 12 months after launch. What are the factors that make it a success or failure? Is it number of new visitors? Is it number of returning visitors? What about newsletter signups, online purchases? You set the rules, but have a good think about what is most important why are you creating this website and how are you going to measure whether that's working or not think about branding an impactful engaging brand can have a huge difference on the success of your website let's take an example apple apple largest company in the world their website will not have this sleek minimalist bauhaus style finish to it without the evolution of their particular brand over a long period of time if you look at the very first apple logo you can see just how much evolution's happened with their brand and their logo over time. There is a saying that a bad workman blames his tools. Well, in this case, I'm gonna defend the workman and say, if we are working with a substandard brand, one that doesn't really send the culture and the message of the organization across or makes mistakes that it doesn't look professional, then there's only so much a web designer, even the best in the business can do with that. Color palettes, font selection, branding, iconography, all of these aspects make a huge difference on the overall look and feel of a website. Do you have brand guidelines? If so, great. If not, then there's a few tools that we can add into the description to help you. Google Fonts is a huge library of free open source fonts that you can use on your website. How you install them on your website will vary depending on what system you're using. The good news is if you're using website builders like Squarespace or even Wix, they will have the libraries built in automatically. Next up, we're going to head over to Color Lovers. And if you haven't got a color palette for your website, here are some pre-designed swatches by professionals. And there's some really nice options here. If color is your blind spot, then I'd recommend using those to get a professional color palette that really enhances your website. Then moving on to stock images and stock content. 
I'd strongly recommend Canva first because Canva has a range of illustrations that you can build your own illustration sets without being an illustrator. It's got stock photography and video that you can add to your website. The caveat is many of these assets are not available on the free plan, although some are. So you're looking at around £100 or $110 a year, give or take, to sign up to the pro account. And I would say that's well worth it. You can also sign up on a free trial, I believe, and I'll try and put some information in the description for you. If you're after a bit of inspiration, many website builders like Squarespace and Wix, as mentioned before, will have their own template libraries, WordPress as well. However, if you're not using any of those platforms or you wanted something completely different to catch your attention, then I'd recommend heading over to Awards. That's Awards with WWW in. Again, I'll leave a link in the description for you. And that'll give you some great examples that you can have a look through and give you some inspiration. But do not copy. I strongly, strongly <laughs> emphasize that if you copy a website template in however you build it, one, it's not gonna be authentic to you. Every website is different. So even when we're using starting templates, we're always changing the look, the feel of it to match what your audience wants to see. That's the first thing. But the most important thing is it's not legal and it's not the right thing to do. So when we're talking about inspiration, we're thinking, oh, I really like the style that they've done there. How can I steal that small part of it, make it my own, which then evolves the process, not just a blatant copy. I mentioned starting templates. Don't reinvent the wheel if you don't need to, especially if you're looking at a simple brochure website. There are loads of templates for whatever platform you decide to use. I'm going to use an example here. And yes, it's a blatant plug for Pixel Haze Store. Head over to Pixel Haze Store. We've got a load of Squarespace templates that will give you a huge head start at a ridiculously low price. So we've got a wide range of templates that allow you to design in Squarespace, depending on the industry that you're in. And a lot of the information that I'm using from this course is, of course, in that template because it's important that we practice what we preach. We also have a range of plugins that allow you to create bespoke effects with your website without any coding knowledge. We've got step-by-step -step guys in there as well. We're not the only company creating templates for website builders. So by all means, have a look around. But if you head over to the Pixel Hay store, I'll leave a voucher code for you so you can get your own little discount for it as well. We've also got a full detailed course called our Squarespace Box of Tricks which takes you through this planning process right the way through to the go live process, how to design and maintain professional websites right the way through the process. We've also got live examples of courses where we spend a huge amount of time building websites for our existing clients. Can't justify the costs at this stage? Don't panic. You can simply subscribe to our Pixel Haze YouTube channel or just hit the rewind button on this course. But the idea of this particular course is to get you up and running with planning, managing, and getting ready to build your own website. If that's the case. See you next time.